afternoon. Uh, thanks for sticking around for my presentation. It's the last one in this uh, block. Uh, I'm Edward Walsh, and I'm a master's in GIS candidate uh, with Penn State. And uh, as uh, mentioned, my presentation is on evolving Syrians to map reconstruction. And uh, the theme is on leveraging volunteer geographic information uh, technology for longer term development projects. So um, we've seen a lot of examples over the years where uh, OSM and volunteer geographic information technologies have been used uh, to help with uh, short-term emergency response uh, scenarios. But in, our, in this presentation, the goal is to think about how to leverage these technologies um, for longer-term development projects, and uh, including uh, reconstruction in Syria. So. Uh, in this presentation, we'll look at how uh, Syrians already used uh, VGI technology uh, during the conflict. Uh, and uh, then we'll look at uh, the current state of uh, the OSM data over Syria and how it's evolved over time. And uh, then uh, what we'll look at uh, how uh, VGI can help with reconstruction and uh, what is needed to get Syrians more involved in, in mapping for their own reconstruction. So this is an example of where Syrians already used VGI during the conflict. Uh, this is a group based in Damascus, and uh, they encouraged uh, citizens to report the locations of where checkpoints, snipers, uh, and troop gatherings were. Uh, the group then took this information off of Facebook, and then uh, they built a map layer in Google Maps. and. Uh, that layer could then be loaded by uh, ordinary citizens into a desktop application or more likely a mobile phone uh, so they could find safer routes uh, to navigate the city. So this kind of shows where uh, Syrians already used VGI during the conflict and uh, the potential uh, of using it uh, in the future during reconstruction. So now we'll take a look at uh, what the state of uh, the OSM data is over Syria and how it's evolved over time, uh, who contributed this data, and uh, if in its current state this data would be useful for planning for reconstruction. So uh, first we'll briefly go over uh, how we prepared the data. Uh, using the Osmium tool, uh, we ran a couple of simple commands on the history file for Syria. Uh, to derive a snapshot of what the OSM data looked like during four-month intervals starting in May of 2011, shortly after the protests started, and until January of 2017. So uh, then we loaded this data into QGIS, uh, and we created a grid of 10-kilometer uh, hexagons uh, over Syria. And uh, for each uh, four-month time interval, we counted the number of OSM features that uh, intersected each 10-kilometer hexagon. Then we used the Time Manager plugin in QGIS uh, to create animations showing the growth of the map over time. Uh, lastly, to get information on uh, statistics on who the contributors are, we used the script that was written by uh, Dr. Sterling Quinn from uh, Central Washington U University. So in this first animation, we're going to take a look at the increase in the number of features uh, in four-month time increments. Uh, and um, significant cities and towns will be labeled uh, on the map and highlighted. So as you can see in uh, May 2011, uh, there is a little bit of coverage, and it's mostly over uh, urban areas. So by mid-2012, there's a lot of data added along Damascus, Homs, and Hama corridor area. Then by mid-2013, we see cities in the east mapped for the first time. Then uh, in 2014, uh, with the emergence of ISIL, we start seeing uh, smaller towns uh, get mapped in the north. 
And finally, uh, coverage improves a little bit more in the east and uh, over major urban areas in, uh, like Aleppo and Damascus. So on this graph, uh, we can see the steady increase in the number of features over time. Uh, earlier on, uh, a lot of the features that were added were ways, and uh, later on, uh, there's a notable increase in the number of area features added. Uh, and the graph also hints at periods of time when uh, there were significant steps in the amounts of features that were added. Uh, so uh, May 2012 is an example, or uh, May 2013 is another step. Uh, so to better understand when and where these significant additions were made to the map, uh, we'll uh, look at this animation. Uh, for this animation, in each, in each four month time increments, uh, areas where there were significant additions made to the map uh, are going to be highlighted in darker shades of green uh, and uh, the corresponding cities will be labeled too. So between January and May of 2012, a lot of data is added along Damascus' Homs Hama, uh, where a lot of initial battles of the conflict were fought. In mid-2013, there's data added to several cities, including for the first time cities in the east. Then we have a little break where there wasn't much data added. And uh, ISIL emerges around the end of 2014, and we see a lot of data added to smaller towns in the north and the city of Raqqa, where they were uh, most active. Then we have uh, some data added to cities in the east, uh, and then in the west. And uh, by the end of our study period, uh, in the final months of 2016, we see some data added to a uh, Kurdish majority area in the northeast and uh, the city of Aleppo as it was uh, getting take, uh, overrun or getting taken over by the regime completely uh, at the end of 2016. So um, the irregular way uh, in which features were added over time as depicted in this, in this graph suggests the possibility that uh, significant events may have motivated users to contribute. Um, but it also suggests that a few super contributors may be responsible for a lot of the content. So with that, we took a look at who the contributors were. Uh, we focused on two dimensions of contributors, those who are likely local uh, versus those who likely aren't local, and those who are casual mappers uh, versus those who are super contributors. So we estimated that a contributor was likely local uh, when at least 70% of the change sets they made in OpenStreetMap were over Syria, and uh, they either had an Arabic username or they made a change set comment in Arabic. So looking at the total number of uh, contributions over time on the graph uh, in the orange, it's no surprise to see that uh, a lot of them are likely, we estimate that a lot of them are likely not local. Uh, when evaluating the number of contributions uh, that users made, uh, for those uh, contributors that, uh, those that contributed 500 or more change sets uh, over Syria, we considered them super contributors. So we only identified eight uh, super contributors over Syria, and we estimate that seven of, the, seven of them are likely not local. And the one local super contributor uh, According to an online profile that we found, he's a member of the uh, Syrian diaspora that's in Germany now. So uh, in light of this, we uh, identified nine more local contributors that uh, added 100 or more change sets over Syria, and four of those nine uh, tagged 15 or more features in German. So considering how hard uh, it is for someone uh, in Syria to uh, regularly contribute to the map. It's uh, not a stress to say that those that are members of the diaspora are probably uh, more regular contributors than those that are still in affected areas. 
So overall, most change sets uh, in Syria may have been added by non-locals, uh, but thanks to the efforts of the one uh, local super contributor, uh, we estimate that around 40% of the change sets uh, were uh, over Syria were added by locals. So a lot of the damage done during the conflict was at the local scale. So in this animation, we're going to try and understand better what the OSM data coverage at that scale is for Syria over uh, the city of Aleppo. So uh, the title of the graph on the left may be a little bit hard to see, but uh, that's the time interval that we're looking at, and the yellow dot is the number of features for that, for that time interval. So we start with relatively low coverage, and then the first large step in uh, row coverage is between May and uh, September 2012, and another step in the first four months of 2013. Then there's about 60 months where a lot of fe features, uh, where there weren't a lot of features added. And uh, between September and May uh, of 2000, and, uh, September 2014, May 2015, you see, uh, start seeing a lot of buildings being added to the west part of the city. Uh, and then finally, uh, in the later months of 2016, we see some buildings added to the east part of the city. So is this uh, data coverage and OSM adequate for reconstruction efforts? Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case uh, for Aleppo right now. Uh, according to a report that the World Bank published in July, um, most of the damage that was done to housing in Aleppo was in the central and eastern parts of the city, and those are the areas that have the least building coverage in OSM, and those areas also happen to be uh, areas that the rebels held for most of the conflict. The areas uh, that uh, OSM has the best coverage for uh, in the west of the city um, were controlled by the Syrian government for most of the conflict, and they didn't suffer nearly as much damage as the east and central parts. So in addition to housing, uh, the World Bank report also focused on the impact of the war on uh, power, water, medical, uh, and education infrastructure. Uh, current OSM data over Syria has a, a lot of uh, regional scale power data, as you can see on the graphic to the right. Um, but the subsidy scale uh, power data that would be needed for reconstruction planning is lacking, uh, as indicated by the graphic on the, lower, on the left. Data on the water infrastructure is also very limited. Uh, only a small portion of medical facilities have been mapped, and less than a fifth of Syria schools uh, have been mapped. So as it stands, uh, OSM does not include enough coverage of uh, infrastructure that's important for reconstruction in Syria. This brings us to the next section on how can uh, volunteer geographic information technologies help with reconstruction. So uh, first, the war has led to a lot of tension and uh, divisiveness between uh, parts of Syrian society. Uh, so uh, if reconstruction is done to favor only certain groups, which tends to be the case after almost any civil war, then uh, the tensions will only continue. But uh, OpenStreetMap and VGI uh, technologies are a great way uh, to try and get as many uh, Syrian groups, parts of society in involved in planning for the rebuilding of their country. And um, to make its assessments, uh, the World Bank relied on imagery uh, and reports by the Syrian government and NGOs, as well as social media. But if uh, locals were more involved in enhancing OpenStreetMap and volunteering geographic information, that could help provide much better uh, information on what local needs are. Reconstruction already began in a lot of uh, parts of Syria with uh, local groups organizing debris removal. And with the regime staying in power, likely to stay in power, uh, a lot of donors uh, are going to uh, want to reach out to these local groups. So volunteer geographic information technology could help uh, 
provide uh, some more accountability and reassurance to uh, those donors uh, as to the uh, funding of, of the projects that they fund. So a VGI platform can also uh, provide a common operating picture where you could have uh, utility companies and uh, donors, local authorities, and citizens, and city planners all come together and add their data and, and update it. Um, facilitated volunteer geographic information methods could also be very helpful during reconstruction. Um, using methods similar to what uh, Seeger uses in this example, a uh, city planner could present the layout to uh, local citizens and then they can provide feedback uh, on how they would like or how they envision their neighborhood would look like. Um, this can make sure in neighborhoods that are diverse and have several groups uh, living in them that the account, that uh, the needs of these different groups are being accounted for. There's a lot of potential uh, for OpenStreetMap and volunteer geographic information applications to help uh, with reconstruction, but these applications will not be useful unless the Syrians uh, use them. So uh, last year, uh, an Arabic interface for uh, ID editor was uh, released, and this certainly helped attract more local contri contributions. Uh, but for Syrians that are still in affected areas, uh, they won't be able to contribute unless it's from a mobile device in areas that have intermittent connectivity. Applications such as maps.me uh, that are already popular with Arabic speaking uh, users uh, allow this in a very limited way. Uh, so more data entry functionality would be needed uh, in order to make it easier and more appealing for Syrians to add features and attribution to existing features that would uh, help for reconstruction. Thank you for your attention. Uh, hope that you found this presentation stimulating uh, some ideas on how OSM and VGI technology could help uh, with longer term development uh, challenges. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sterling Quinn and my advisor, Anthony Robinson, for their support. And uh, I'd be happy to take your questions or comments. Thank you. Hi. Um, why do you think there was such a discrepancy between the amount of data added in Aleppo and various areas of the city? Can you repeat that? Why do you think there was basically so much more data added in the western area of Aleppo versus the eastern? That's a good question I'd like to look more into. Uh, looking at the imagery over that area, it seems like those areas may have been easier to map, actually, because the uh, eastern parts of the city, uh, housing is more dense, so it's a little bit harder, uh, especially for someone who's not from the area, to, to go and map the building. So that may be one reason, but uh, that's a really good question, though, that that be worth looking into more. So did you try to find out a correlation between the number of chain sets uh, uh, in OSM versus the timeline of the war? Uh, no. Okay. I assumed that there was more. <laughs> uh, we looked at the number of contributors over time, and there was a steady increase until 2016. There was a dramatic increase in the number of contributors. So. That may be correlated to number of chain sets too, um, but there is. I'm just curious about the, um, the, I guess, the features of the buildings that were mapped. Did you see any buildings, I mean, that were destroyed that were mapped? Or are these buildings that are all standing? I didn't look at that. They're, uh, on the west part of the city, I don't, I don't think there were many buildings that were destroyed. Uh, on the east, there may be some buildings that were mapped that were destroyed. Uh, but that'd be something worth looking into. If there was uh, 
if there is uh, more data on the east part of the city and we use uh, technologies like uh, Mapillary, uh, if locals could contribute data like that, ground photos, then you could probably have even people outside um, tag destroyed buildings and such. Uh, my question is, how do you see this actually playing out during the reconstruction process? If a lot of these features are destroyed, do you want, do you think people are going to try to recreate the city as it was, or is it going to be like a Syrian government kind of top-down imposition, reconstruction, resettlement process? Uh, the way it's working out right now is it's very localized, uh, but uh, we're starting to see like some Iranian companies uh, are starting to have deals with the regime. Uh, even some Turkish companies, although they don't get along uh, with the Syrian government, they, they're trying to, to get in on it too. So um, some donors, they want to reach out uh, to just local groups. So some efforts are going to be local, some are going to be government. That it, remains to be seen. But, I feel like there is a potential uh, during different stages of reconstruction that Syrians could use uh, these type of technologies to, to help uh, inform reconstruction plans and during reconstruction uh, coordinate some logistics maybe and um, yeah. It would seem that OSM would allow you to be more anonymous than say Facebook. Do you believe that that would be a factor? Um, yes, <laughs> you'd hope that uh, more locals would be willing to contribute because uh, being on social media could get you targeted in Syria. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a good, uh, um, good thing to consider. Any more questions? I was just curious, is there any metric system as um, you said there were individuals reporting from Germany or outside of the local area as to accuracy or? Uh, we just did a rough estimation. Uh, we just looked at where they did most of their mapping, assuming that if most of their mapping was in Syria, that they may be from there. And looking at their username, if it's in Arabic, then maybe they're from that area. Uh, but we could, uh, with the script that we ran, we were able to take a look at uh, what languages they've tagged uh, features in. So uh, it was a little bit surprising to see that uh, the ones that were more regular contributors that seemed to be local uh, were adding stuff in German as well. Thank you very much. I think we're all done with the session. That's a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.